Hi, I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. Continuing on the series on driving, let's talk about choosing a vehicle for defense. Now it's kind of a weird thing, why are we choosing a vehicle for defense? Aren't guns for defense? Well, if you looked at the actuarial tables, while there's many things that could happen to you that would harm you, there's a really good chance that something driving related is going to be very high up on that list. The truth is, a lot of us spend a lot of time in our vehicles, and there's, we're sharing the road with a lot of other people. And some of them are impaired, some of them are distracted, and some of them are idiots. So we've all heard of defensive driving, and generally that's a matter of you know your actions, you know being alert and aware of what's going on you, and noticing things before they fully play out, and being able to react to them before it becomes critical. But part of defensive driving is choosing a defensible car. Um, if you think back a few years ago, you may remember the name Reginald Denning. And um, Reginald Denning was a truck driver in Los Angeles who was minding his own business um, when the Rodney King verdict came out and there was immediate uh, rioting. And uh, Reginald was pulled out of his semi-truck and uh, dragged to the ground and uh, beaten uh, to within an inch of his life. Uh, luckily, a uh, Good Samaritan uh, dragged him out of the uh, out of the crowd that was beating him and got him to the hospital. But uh, if it hadn't been for that Good Samaritan, he would have died. Even though he was driving in a vehicle that was more than capable of driving out of the trouble. So having the vehicle is only part of it. The other part of it is being able and willing to do what it takes to drive out of trouble. So what am I looking for in a defensing defensible vehicle um, I'll list those things for you one of the first things I'm looking for is a full frame I want a vehicle that has full frame rails I want those for the structural rigidity so that if I need to push a vehicle out of the way or if I need to jump a curb or something along those lines the car will stay intact I'm also looking for good ground clearance. So once again, if I have to go off-road, if I have to jump a curb to get around a, a roadblock, I want the ground clearance to do that. I'm also looking for four-wheel drive. I want traction regardless of what the situation, so that if I need to you know, go cross-country, if I need to go across a lawn, if I need to go through a muddy area, that I have the traction to do so. Also, four-wheel drive will be helpful if I need to push things out of my way and I need that extra traction. I'm also looking for good visibility. So I want good tall windows all the way around the vehicle. Anytime we're talking about self-protection, awareness of what's going on around you is critical. And I'm amazed at some of these vehicles. There's been a trend in the last few years of, of um, making the windows very narrow. It's sort of a, a throwback to the old chopped cars. And um, uh, I will never own a Hummer for the very fact that the windows on them are very low. So the reduced visibility is, is, uh, is there. And I know that there's been a number of cases of um, uh, people hitting other people or kids, especially kids, uh, backing up with the Hummers because the visibility out the back is just horrendous. Uh, also, as far as visibility, is height. So when you have good ground clearance and you've got the extra suspension of four-wheel drive, that puts the vehicle up a bit higher, which puts you up a bit higher. And that allows you to see past the cars in front of you. So when I'm driving, I'm not looking at the car in front of me. I'm looking at the car in front of him or three or four or five cars ahead depending on the circumstances and the speed I'm driving so that I can see a problem developing as much as an eighth of a mile away and have plenty of time to uh, come up with an alternative to what's going on. So whether that's you know, being able to stop in time or take an alternative path, um, I may see that the, you know, the um, uh, traffic is starting to block up and there's a side road and I have a chance to go take that side road. And uh, lastly, I want air conditioning so that I can keep my windows up 
so that if I'm driving through, you know, cities or towns, um, I'm much less likely to have um, somebody reaching in and grabbing something off the seat or attacking me directly. So I want my windows up all the time and air conditioning allows me to do that. And I also want power windows and power door locks so that I can control those from the, pass from the driver's seat so that um, uh, if I need to roll up a window or in, the, in one side or the other, I can do that at the push of a button. And uh, same thing with door locks. So those are the basic things I'm looking for, and that will allow me to uh, avoid a lot of problems that I might not be able to in a lesser car. So um, let's look at some of that in a little bit more detail. Can your car do that? This Jeep Wrangler Rubicon handled that with no problem. Now why is that important? It may be that I'm stuck in traffic and I may need to jump a curb to get out of a roadblock or get around a blockage. Um, I may need to go across country. I may need to go across somebody's yard. Um, there may be small uh, things in the road that are either there accidentally or put there purposely to slow me down. So it could be, you know, maybe a small tree across the road or a telephone pole or something along those lines. So between having four-wheel drive and good ground clearance, that allows me to do this. Okay, I mentioned earlier that one of the things I'm looking for are full frame rails. So you can see those here. That gives this vehicle great strength and rigidity. So that will allow me to push things out of the way without distorting the car. You know, if the body gets a little distorted, it's not a big deal because the frame is still intact. Okay, so to recap, let's go over some of these things I'm looking for in a vehicle for self-defense. I want a vehicle that's got a full frame. I want good ground clearance. I want four-wheel drive. I want good visibility. That includes good windows and good height. And I want air conditioning, electric windows, and electric door locks. All of those features will give me a vehicle that will get me out of trouble if I find myself in it. I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there.